Hi, welcome to Mailbag Monday. Yes, I'm in front of the camera this time. I thought I'd do something a little bit different, give you a very quick uh, update for those who don't follow along on the forum and uh, follow me on Twitter either, where I often talk about this sort of stuff. I was looking at potentially uh, moving out of my current lab space and getting another lab, but that sort of didn't happen. But what I'm getting here now is a lab upgrade uh, in my current uh, lab slash office here in terms of internet. So I of my crappy ADSL 2 plus uh, internet which is like 900k bits per second upload speed or something I will this week uh, hopefully that's uh, the plan get an 88 symmetrical connection so that's 8 megabits uh, download 8 megabits upload so I'm losing a bit of download speed but I'm gaining that valuable upload speed which I need to upload my YouTube videos uh, efficiently and also it will the faster speed will allow me to do some more live stream and uh, you know real-time video stuff so that should be fantastic I'll link in down below a forum a section on the forum where you can talk about that and I'm asking for ideas about what uh, people want to see what I can do with the new extra bandwidth and I'm going to reorganize the lab here <clears throat> going to put a little uh, mechanical workshop maybe and some more shelving and stuff like that to make better use of the space I've got here anyway that's just a very quick update oh I will be going in uh, assuming that internet new internet connection works out I will be going to a 20 slash 20 meg connection so I'll eventually have 20 meg upload here uh, fiber coming into the building and then uh, 20 meg uh, ethernet coming into the lab here oh fantastic can't wait so I'll be no longer editing my uh, videos at home the plan is to move all my editing uh, video editing gear here and be more efficient in the lab here this lab slash office and do my editing and upload here because this is where I'll have the fast internet connection I've done it at home before because that's where I've had my fastest internet connection the lab here has always been quite slow so that's fantastic so let's get on with the mailbag first of all it's a whole bunch of stuff it's only been like two weeks and in it comes again unbelievable anyway I missed a couple of uh, postcards last time and this one here comes from Marcus and he's in Austria in and this is a photo in Salzburg a stairway up to a castle it was taken for those who want to know technically oh I'm foo hello <laughs> love it foo um, it was taken by a Zenith Horizon 35 millimeter panorama camera thank you very much Marcus awesome Next up, we have one from Wayne. Good on you, Wayne. Good Aussie name, Wayne. My uh, brother-in-law and father-in-law are uh, both named Wayne. There you go. Um, he did a graduation trip around Taiwan. So there you go. Um, nice sunny day. Thank you very much. And this one's from David. G'day, Dave. And he is um, in the room next to Wayne. Go figure. They obviously go to the same uh, university. They're an information and computer uh, engineering ICE student. They focus on human activity activities recording with embedded systems excellent and uh, this one is uh, Taroko National Park in eastern Taiwan awesome thanks guys and next up we have one from Trey g'day Trey um, he's studying EE in Louisiana Tech University awesome there you go some local Louisiana trees beautiful in a park somewhere there you go that's all for the postcards thank you very much guys let's get on to the mailbags quite a few of them First up, we have one from Ocean Controls here in Australia. And you've uh, seen Ocean Controls on the blog before. They do uh, various types of little uh, embedded systems and other stuff. And I think I know what this is, and it's going to be fun. I like it. This will be state, state of the art, folks. And it's from Greg Radian. I won't uh, spoil it for you on the top there. So let's just open it up. He sent a couple of things, and, but one of them is a real cracker. I love the design of this. Everyone's going to want one of these. Look at this. Let's open it up and crack it open. What it is, is an Arduino shield. You put it together like this somehow and these go in there like that. It forms a spindle and you put some tape in there and it's a tape dispenser. Awesome! The best and most useful Arduino shield ever! Check it out. Now tell me, how is that not the most useful Arduino shield of all time? Fantastic! 
Oh, unbelievable. Everyone needs to get one of these. A few little design issues with it. Oh, there's no snap off here for the tape. And yes, it is uh, once it's all soldered in place, you can't get the tape out. So it's like a single use roll. Eh, maybe that, you know, he'll get that right in the Mark II version. But everyone has to get one of these suckers. It makes your Arduino so incredibly useful. It's fantastic and of course it only works with a genuine Arduino board because of the, the signal level compatibility on there but fantastic. If you want one go to Ocean Control's um, uh, website link down below. Awesome. Everyone needs one of these. And you know what I really like? A letter that's got line numbers on it. Fantastic. Thumbs up. And uh, Greg's also include this little uh, thermometer uh, shield as well. And basically uses the Max uh, 31 uh, 855. And as he um, says, I've done uh, other videos on this. It uses a linear approximation for the thermocouple voltage and also the cold junction. It's got it does have cold junction compensation on. And I'll link in my uh, uh, temperature uh, tutorial video, thermocouple tutorial video down below if you haven't seen how these things work. Anyway, it's inside the chip instead of right at the uh, junction itself. But it's only a, a centimeter or two away, and it's generally okay. It certainly is. Um, it is not as uh, accurate as a precision circuit with a NIST lookup, but for low cost per channel, it's good enough. So, excellent. Thank you very much, Greg. That looks very nice indeed. Got a little prototyping area there as well. Um, if somebody wants this, I think I will give this one away. So, uh, uh, first person to leave their uh, details in the YouTube uh, comments or, well, anyway, yeah, let's make it the YouTube comments. First person to leave a comment in there gets it. And of course, that is for a standard uh, K-type thermocouple, which you can get for a dime a dozen on eBay. So that one looks uh, very useful. Eight-channel thermocouple. Fantastic. You could uh, do some neat uh, temperature logging with that. Oh, and the specs for those playing along at home, 14-bit resolution, 0.25, uh, that translates to 0.25 degrees C over a couple hundred degree range. Very nice. Uh, nominal plus minus 2% accuracy. That's all you're going to get on the uh, cheap thermocouples anyway. So that's terrific. And he does say there's a duct tape version coming soon that increases incredibly useful. You think the uh, electrical tape one's great, but anyway, look at this documentation. Quite thorough. How to assemble this Arduino tape dispenser. Terrific, and it can support two reels wide. Oh, red and black. Fantastic work. Everyone should get one. Looks like we've got an Aussie Fest. This one's from uh, Vidabus, uh, Michael Costello. He's in Blackburn South in Victoria. Thank you very much, Michael. Let's crack this sucker. Oh, there's a remote control. Strong. Oh, it's a set-top box. I used to have a strong set-top box. And uh, oh, I think it failed, did it? Yeah, they all fail. Hang on. Here we go. This strong s dot seems to have died for some reason. I thought I'd send it to you for a teardown if you wish. Thank you very much, Michael. It will most likely be the uh, uh, caps in the thing. Uh, defective. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Crack it open. As you can see, there's not much in these things at all. They're really built down to a price. And at first glance, uh, that looks uh, quite well uh, designed and laid out. They've got the heatsink well and truly stuck onto the main uh, chip down in there. Yeah, these set-top boxes, not much in them. There's a little uh, crappy tuner down in there and uh, just one main chip handle and everything. Got some memory coupled onto that. Mains power supply around here. Not a huge amount happened. They're doing the right things. They've at least got a uh, PCB mount fuse down there, even if it is vertical ended up 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 like that. And uh, well, yeah, a couple of isolation slots and the you opto know, couple are going between there. And yeah, 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 they've got the basics happening. So anyway, it's good enough for the price. And well, these things fail. I I don't know how hot this one gets. Probably not a huge amount. No bulges in the caps there that I can see but uh, yeah I'm not going to uh, troubleshoot this thing obviously but yeah no bulges in any of those caps is more likely to be the mains uh, the high side mains here than the just all the uh, secondary side over here although it could be some of these low ESR uh, output caps here because uh, the, they, they will, uh, because it's a switch mode power supply, if you're getting a reasonably high current out of here, then there's power dissipating inside the ESR, inside these two, well, presumably, 
low ESR caps? Are they? I don't know. You'd, are they labelled as such? Anyway, they should be. Usually in a switch mode. Uh, power, so yeah, low ESR. It says low ESR down in there. You probably can't see it, but uh, there you go. So, yeah, they uh, heat up uh, due to the internal ESR, and then the internal heating just makes it makes the electrolyte dry out more which then increases the ESR and it's sort of a snowballing effect and your good quality caps you know you'll get your 10,000 hours or something it depends on how you uh, rate them in your circuit but the crap ones whatever brand crappy brand they throw in here this week in this particular uh, brand I don't know could be gone but typically you might see a bulge in there or something but I'd need to get my ESR meter on that but anyway that's not that's not too horrible at all. I think that's quite neat and tidy. And yeah, there's nothing on these things. There's just a tuner HDMI out. And uh, for all of the, well, it's got components. I was going to say legacy stuff. There is. They've just got the audio and uh, um, composite video down there. But gee, yeah, it's a set top box. Meh. I've had these fail. Dime a dozen. And this one is from Her Majesty's Royal Mail. Oh, when's she going to cark it? How old is she? Jeez, unbelievable. I don't know. Um, it is from Boldport. There you go. I haven't, uh, offhand, I don't, uh, can't recall. It is, yeah, no name on there, but it's from Cambridge. So let's uh, crack this sucker open and see what we've got. No idea. Interesting. We've got some cardboard happening here. And what else? We've got a note. Don't want to read the note. It's a... Corkwood puzzle rejected. Assembly guide missing. Awesome. So we can assemble a puzzle. I hang on. Looks like we have some sort of signage. Oh, look at that. Piece yeah, is that yeah, that's etched PCB with an acrylic a wedge between an acrylic. I am an engineer superhero. Fuck yeah. Awesome. Brilliant. Thank you very much to Dave Jones. There you go. Terrific. Superhero, second edition, red, 41 of 50, limited edition. Oh, that's terrific. I love it. That's beautiful. It's a uh, coaster, of course. It's a, yep, it's designed to, oh, well, no, you'd have to put the rubber feet on the bottom to make it a decent, uh, decent coaster to put your stubby down on there, but there you go. Beautiful. And the guilty party, there he is, Sar. Good day, Sar Dreamer. Oh, my auto face detect has automatically detected your face on the camera. I can't show it here, but it, yeah, I mean, it's following your the little uh, uh, focus thing is following your head around. So there you go. I can even recognise your little uh, uh, hand drawn, cartoony drawn thing. Terrific. Now this corkwood puzzle thing is interesting. Inside we have a bag of massive uh, through hole. Uh, resistors there, a couple of watts, a couple of huge big 10 millimeter LEDs, and a couple of couple of trannies in there. And uh, let's rip this open. And ah, here we go. There we go. I don't know what the corkwood thing is. I don't uh, understand that. Oh, got a taper on that. Oh, isn't that sexy little curves on that? Look at that. That's actually. Uh, Quite neat. I'm not sure what it's uh, going to be doing unless their um, little, uh, you know, special lead flasher uh, TO92s or something like that. I'm not sure what it's going to be doing. Hmm. Check out the layout. It's all squiggly lines. Trademark. Squiggly trace. Trademark. There you go. Fantastic. I'm not sure why. To add to the puzzle feel, I guess. Ah, here you go. It makes sense. Look, check it out. You use the two boards like that with the components going between them and he explains in the 60s and 70s inventive engineers save space by using the corkwood assembly i had no idea it was called that there you go learn something new every day where components were sandwiched between the two circuit boards this construction became less useful we've reduced component sizes yeah pcb manufacturing and all the integration we take for granted these days but yes you look inside old radios and things like that you will find this multiple board uh, construction like that, even old uh, meters and uh, stuff like that, um, it was fairly common back in the day. Oh, I wouldn't be like it to be early 70s, it wouldn't be uh, late 70s or anything like that. Um, yeah, that puzzle is a tribute to the construction engineers that came up with it. The puzzle is to correctly assemble the circuit with the components at hand. Once assembled, all LEDs light up when power is applied. 
Excellent. There you go. So yeah, the transistors probably work as little uh, switches as part of the puzzle or something like that. Terrific. Awesome work. Thank you very much, Sar. And he's got a blog and a shop as well you can, where you can buy stuff. Check it out. And what's inside the Tiny Engineer Superhero Emergency Kit? Contents, PCB, two resistors, one lead, one capacitor, one FET, and soldering sponges. All you need uh, for adults. More info at... Terrific. Let's crack it open. Oh, look at that. Ah, oh, Engineer Superhero Specific Sponge. Great. Ah, oh, awesome. <laughs> Love sponges, and look at that nice gold, sexy gold plated board. All uh, it looks like, yeah. Once again, that puzzle. Hey, vehicles, I uh, check it out. I like it, terrific. And it looks like you solder the parts in there in line embedded with the board. That's really quite neat. Thanks very much, Sar. That is really interesting, but. The most interesting thing is, here we go, all of my circuits are designed with PCB Mod E, is it? And open source software that is written himself in Python. Unbelievable. Massive props for that. Awesome. Thanks, sir. Next up, we have one from Jacob uh, Philippowicz. I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, and I assume it is, yeah, last name, uh, slash first name from Poland. Thank you very much. We don't get many from Poland, so let's crack this sucker open. And uh, I have blanked out what's in it, because I got a few complaints that, oh, I was, like, reading what's on the, uh, you know, what's on the outside of the package, and it was getting the customs form, and it was giving it away. Okay. Fair call. I do. I do appreciate that half the uh, coolness of this video. There's a letter in there, but let's have a look first. Is oh, ta-da! It is something that I love. Old calculator. Look at that Polish. I presume it's Polish because I can't read that. A Mark sixty one Polish calculator. It looks like it's got a um, uh, fluorescent uh, seven segment display oh oh we oh look check it out we have an original schematic oh no way look at that who gives the schematic for their calculator that is just awesome hi dave rumor has it i like vintage calculators yeah just a bit so i got one for you 1994 vintage i thought it would have been older than that working mint condition uh, electronica mark 61 this <coughs> beauty was to uh, designed in uh, 1984 in the ussr that's more like it back in the ussr no, I won't sing it. I can't sing. Uh, it's programmable. 105 steps of memory. 15 registers. Uses RPN. Of course it does. And it's as slow as a dying cow. Die, cows die slowly, I guess. I have no idea how to program this puppy, but apparently people write games through it. Awesome. Well, you know, you've got to have a hobby. Um, have fun tearing it apart, but you're permitted to... Also permitted to turn it on. There's something I want you to... I'm working on an emulator, an old, late Polish mini-computer, Mira 400. In the mid-90s, I was able to secure tons of documentation. Awesome! Uh, make that available online because I don't access, have access to a working machine. It was the main source of knowledge for getting the emulator to work. And I finally boot the operating system now. Awesome work. A lot of effort goes into that. Thumbs up. Um, what amazes me, what I wanted to share with you is how detailed the documentation was. It's insane. Yes, I... Oh, hang on. There. Oh, okay. That's for the um, the documentation for this calculator is fantastic, let alone the uh, documentation for an old computer. I can imagine. So I'll put this link in down below so people can check it out. Oh, it was part of the end user documentation back in the 70s. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Thank you very much, Jacob Filipowicz. I love the manual. Oh, man. I can't make heads or tails out of this but yeah there, there's the date 94 yeah fair enough and uh ah terrific stuff and here we go i put some batteries in this electronic art mark 61 and well yeah because i wouldn't have been able to read that so i'm glad you told me and here we go will it work and it, it's alive ah there we go we've got pi to two four six seven decimal places there terrific and then uh Where's our exponent on this thing? Oh, goodness, I, I 
<laughs> like, yeah, I, you know, there's some stuff you recognise on there. All the numbers are the same in some of the mathematical stuff. Some of the other stuff, meh. Check out the original pouch. Oh, that's just gold. It really is. Oh, oh, oh. And the screw hole actually had some gunk in there. It was actually gunked up. Not like, it was plugged, but, oh, man. Unbelievable. Anyway, it's a flathead. So let's whip this sucker open, see what we got inside. Oh, Self-tapper. <laughs> and obviously I've got to pry open the side of the case. Now that is interesting. Check that out. Of course, no solder mask on this sucker, just uh, tin plate traces. They've got this secondary board here, which is just held on, directly soldered in there. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. It's almost like it's an afterthought. And look at these interestingly potted chips here, like surface mount. Oh, I'm going to get a close up of that. Well, now that is fascinating. I'm not sure I've ever seen anything like that. Is that hard? No, it's gunked. Okay, no, so it's that's not a hard potting. So is that like a bare die? Is that like a flip chip? down and then reflowed maybe with bumps on the bottom to reflow down onto the bottom like a BGA type part or are there little bond wires they got I can't see anything going off so or maybe it's a um, you know an, an LCC type uh, package with uh, well I can't even see any like uh, castellations on the side or anything like that to solder it down so I don't want to destroy it and dig into that but that is that is fascinating. Never seen anything like that before. Ah, uh, no. Here's what's going on. Look at this. They've got a little, like a, you know, a, a flex PCB. So it's bare die on flex PCB like that. And then the flex PCB is soldered onto uh, like the same pad for like an SO package. Very interesting. So they got that for that one and the one under there. Presumably it's the same for these and we just can't uh, see it. They've, you know, the uh, uh, mounted on the... Oh yeah, there, there it is. Yeah, I can see the membrane under those ones. There we go. There we go. Just didn't see it on that bottom one there. Eh, got something hanging off there. What's that strand? I don't know. But that, that is fascinating. And that is the crusty old switch mechanism. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so this lift-up module here, probably some sort of uh, oscillator, dead giveaway as the adjustment pot on the top here, plus, uh, you know, just a bunch of through-hole parts on there with some sort of clip-on plastic cover. So let's get that off and see what's under. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. That's uh, like, you know, some sort of you know, a voltage regulator. Um, is it charging? Did it use rechargeable batteries or uh, something like that? And uh, the trim pot could be, um, well, it may not be an oscillator. I don't know. But yeah, that is, that is weird. Jeez. Look, it just tacked on with its own plastic cover. Weird. And even funnier is this old <laughs> mains adapter plug pack for it. Oh my God. How crusty is that? It feels just awful it really does it's got some little piss and um <laughs> two wire cable on there with some sort of custom connector oh it's just awful and even though i can't read a word of this um of course you can uh, the universal language is electronics we can read that and it looks like we've got ourselves that uh, module in there was a DC to DC converter. Check it out on the separate board and it's powering the chips over here. Not exactly sure what they're doing. Yeah. Ah, there we go. It's a, you know, we've got a, ourselves a RC oscillator on there, I guess. So is that generate uh, interesting? Is that generating multiple phase clocks or something? I don't know. Hmm. This schematic's got it all. Look at these. They've got all these waveforms in here. Fantastic notes, timing diagrams. Ah, oh, brilliant for those at home who can uh, read that. Go for your life. But absolutely thorough documentation. Unbelievable. Look, there's the individual uh, chip pinouts there. Absolutely terrific. 
I love it. Pin out of the display. Oh, man. Thing of beauty and a joy forever. So thank you very much, Jacob, for that interesting look at a uh, Soviet slash uh, Polish Electronica Mark 61 calculator from the 80s, even though it was 90, manufactured in 94, so they kept manufacturing it, I guess. I don't know. I wonder when it stopped, but, geez, that is... <laughs> That is fascinating, and it doesn't feel... Listen to that creak. Oh, that is just... That's screwed together, folks. And that is just awful. <laughs> but fascinating uh, construction inside. Thank you very much, Jacob. And that's all we've got for the mailbag this week. I do actually have, like, three more items, but I'm going to call it quits today. I think the video is already long enough, and... I've got yet more microcurrents to ship this afternoon, so I'd better get to it. In fact, it's yeah, there it is, 2.30 p.m. on a Monday, so I've got to pack and ship another 100 microcurrents, and maybe I can get that to the, done before uh, peak hour hits. I've got to drive off to the mail-in depot. So I hope you enjoyed Mailbag, and if you want to discuss it, jump on t over to the EV blog forum. The link is down below, although you can leave comments on YouTube or the blog website as well, and I do read them all, and I try and respond to as many as I possibly can. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time.